It's Dan here, marginallyclever.com. It is October 1st, 2021. Um, happy spooky month. Today I'm going to try and use the latest version of the Michelangelo software, which is this thing, to drive the real robot arm over here. And you can see it simulated on the screen in this position. So first I'll go over some of the details about what's in the program, and then I'll build a quick little script you watch me do it and then i'll play the script back and then now you'll know how to do the same um, the arm is completely open source so if you want to get the design files you can get that and print it yourself there is a custom gearbox in here that i get from from somebody special um so if if you have trouble getting that and the fasteners we have a kit that has just the unprintable bits so you can print the rest yourself and then build it at home and that's the most affordable solution uh, enough of the sales pitch. Let's get on with it. So uh, we have three major tabs up here. One is the Marlin interface that actually talks to the live robot. So I can I connect to it like this. And there's the conversation coming from the robot. Um, then there's you can also directly type G code down here if you really if you want to. And um, then you can save the log, clear the log, that kind of thing. These are these are movable if you really want to. But now, um, this you almost never look at because it's kind of scary to type G code. You don't want to make a typo and send the arm through the table. That's no thank you. So I built this jog panel instead, and it has everything in here. It has the first off in the top left are the angle of each of the joints, and you'll see that they're not zeros but they're in, they're in middle position. These are limited so that you can't turn so far that you rip out a wire, for instance. That would not be good. Um, then down here, just below that, we have the uh, end effector. That is the position of a point right right in here. Th that on the screen is the is the pink, blue, and yellow lines right up here on the tip. And I can move this around like so. Right, you can get a different angle on it if you want. Um, I could turn it like this, and then it kind of matches what we're looking at. So let's work with that, yeah? Um, then down here is the end effector target. This is where the arm is trying to move towards, which is not the same as where the tip is. That's, it's the goal, right? Um, and then down here is Jacobian, which is has to do with... This is the relationship between the how fast it can move in three-dimensional space, what we call Cartesian space versus how fast it moves at each of the joints so there's uh, six ways it can six ways it can move which is the vertical there which is so it can move up down forward back left right and it can roll pitch um, it can roll it can pitch and it can twist uh, yaw it can yaw yeah it can roll it can pitch and it can yaw well like, i feel like that should be a nay right uh -uh, nay nay Nay, nay. Um, and then there's five play ways the arm can bend, five spots, right? There's, there's zero, there's one, there's two, there's three, there's four, and that makes five. So it's a six by five matrix. Okay, so these are all read-only elements, right? These four here. But then up here, we have angle driving. Angle driving lets me turn the joints uh, directly. And then Cartesian driving lets me dri uh, move the arm, say, straight down or straight up, and it figures out how to move all the joints to make that happen. Now, lastly is the program interface where you can build a set of moves and then play them in sequence. So first thing I'm going to do here is add one right at the home position, and then I'm going to start jogging. <laughs> And I'm watching here for this this value to be one because that tells me that this is level. I love demoitis, don't you? Are you wired backwards? This whole time you've been wired backwards. You're a very naughty robot.
No, I think it somehow received the wrong message. Yeah, somehow that joint received the wrong message. A, a miscommunication when talking over the um, over the serial connection, the USB connection to the robot. Uh, if you do not send the messages with some kind of a... Can you repeat that back to me, please? You can sometimes get uh, a miscommunication. See here, these... Okay, I'm, I'm, you can see the chat conversation here. I'm sending these messages and it does not confirm the position that it went to. Something I will have to look into. Now I'm just waiting for... Here we go. Why aren't you all the way down there? There we go. And let's try one of these again. That looks good. So the nice thing is that there's all this jogging behavior going on, but but I can fine tune like this. And then save my points into the program. Right? So now in the reference frame, I'm going to switch to end effector. Let's try end effector. Oh, I see, because here the end effector is pointing almost straight up, so that's not very useful. That's what I want. And now we lift. Mm hmm. Add one there. Copy that. Copy that. Copy that. Copy that. Cheap, fast, good. Pick two. That's all I gotta say. So there I copy those moves and then I step back through the program. And now I can rewind and try it all again. Shall we? And here we go.
Uh oh. Oh, that was a close one. An important lesson about making sure you move through clearances. This time? No, it goes right past. Whoosh. Whiff. I want to take a moment here over all the robot noise to thank all my Patreon subscribers and you for watching all the way to the end. Um, I hope you are well and you can join us on this adventure. Build your own robot, improve the code, um, show us some hilarious meme you want to make with it. Um, I don't know. Have a good time. My name's Dan. My website is marginallyclever.com. Come join us on Discord and... I will see you next time.